What's up, everybody? You're on Money Moves. I'm Michael Munsterman. Today, we're going to be talking about operating inside of our gifts. Grind, grind, that's all I know. Find the time to quit, oh no. No matter good or bad, still I go. I never crack under pressure. I can't be broke. Sun up to the sun down. Map it out, not run it down. Mayweather, I never lose. I be making these money moves. Sun up to the sun down. Map it out, not run it down. Mayweather, I never lose. I be making these money moves. Okay, so this is a super interesting conversation for me because when I'm talking about our gift sets for every single person that I talk to, anytime I'm consulting or visiting with an entrepreneur or just talking about somebody, talking with somebody about their grind and hustle, what they want to do and where they want to go, like everybody seems to have this focus on the money. It's, I want to make more money. I want this, I want that, I want this life experience, I want that life experience. But almost always when you boil it down, it comes down to, I want the money. And I think that the hunt gets so skewed that it makes it easy for people who mentally get clear and get focused on what direction they want to go. It makes it easy for guys like that, guys like me, to win. Because I'm looking, like, there comes a point, even if you chase the money and you get lucky, which just being very frank, I did. I was in the right place at the right time. I'm okay being lucky. I love Mark Cuban. He's like, yeah, somebody's got to be the luckiest guy in the world. It might as well be me. Well, for me, I think that there's, even though a lot like the egotistical side of most successful entrepreneurs, they don't want to, they don't want to give anything up to luck. They don't want to. And, and then you've got the Christian based conversation. There's no such thing as luck, right? Like all blessing comes from God, but just a lot of decisions, a lot of free will happening from a lot of different directions. And you have this ability to be in the right place at the right time and have the vision and correct mindset to execute on it. Well, for me, I was especially early on running away from being a poor kid in Missouri. Like I was holding on to this story that I was living from a place of scarcity and we had great vehicles. We had a, a beautiful home. I, ha- I was married. I had two kids, like picture perfect little life from the outside, $300,000 in debt, thinking I'm never going to dig out of this hole. And I'm stuck in some kind of a a blue collar space where this is what I'm going to do forever. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with blue collar workers. A lot of really successful people have had very like regimented careers where they're, they're disciplined in their savings and in their spending and, and you make a little money and live a great life. But that's typically not the person that I'm speaking to. It's it's not normally what I'm thinking about whenever I'm thinking, okay, this is the type of person that I'm trying to reach with this podcast. Because that person's discipline, they get there, they, like it's about safety first. And and for me, it's it's money moves for a reason. Getting your mind right and making the necessary moves to accelerate ahead. But for me back then, I, I just was in this great big pit and I thought, man, I, I don't know what to do next. And, and I had this guy and he called me all the time. I was, so I was a conductor on, on the railroad and, um, I had done that for about a year and a half. And there was this guy in in my role and, and we'll just, for the sake of the podcast, we'll call him Bob and Bob, Bob would call me and say, you're the biggest waste of God given talent on the entire railroad. Congratulations. Your, your brain's going to turn to mush. You're not going to be successful. You're never going to make the things that you've told me in this world. You want to make like, you're never going to get there. You're just a waste. You're, like, this is pitiful. Well, enjoy your trip on the rail. Like every time I talked to this guy, he'd beat me up for working on the railroad. And so finally one day I'm like, dude, don't ever call me back unless you call me with a solution. You like to pick on me and give me crap for being on the railroad. My pushback to you is, why don't you come back to me when you have an idea? And and he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And that was my ability to communicate, my ability to sell, my ability to close, my ability to to negotiate. And, and, And he actually, he seen a lot more in me. I knew I could sell. I knew I could close. I knew I could generate a living, but I had never Like he saw that my grandpa had molded some wisdom into me that gave me the experience and the operational capacity to grow and scale companies. And so, you know, kind of self-serving for him, he was selling a product out of Nebraska. It was these little wooden infrared box heaters. And the dude says to me, he's like, um, he called me back a week later. I almost didn't take his call. And the reason that I didn't take his call was because I was sick of being beat up verbally. 
I'd had a terrible day on the railroad that day. I was putting, you know, the thing about railroaders, especially conductors and engineers, a conductor's job is to uh, watch watch the road, essentially. He's in charge of the cargo and the freight. He's responsible for the 110 cars attached to the locomotive. And the engineer's job is to drive the train. But if you take two entirely different personalities and lock them in the cab of a locomotive for 12 hours at a time in a job that's already frustrating and you're already pissed off because you were pulled away from your family, like it's tense. Sometimes you get lucky and you work with really great people and you really enjoy them and you become fast friends. And then sometimes it's the polar opposite. So imagine being put, you, you know, <laughs> take, take Hillary and put her in with Donald and lock him in the cabin of a locomotive for, for, for 12 hours. And, and that sometimes is what you get. And so that I had just finished a trip like that. I was on the last leg of it. It was like, you're not even really supposed to answer your phone. And I see the guy's name on my car ID. I'm like, I do not want to talk to Bob. Every time he calls me, he gives me crap. This is not going to be, I told him don't ever call me back without a, without a reason. So I'm going to just test it. Like if he doesn't have a solution for me being the biggest waste of talent on the railroad, then I'm going to hang up on him. And so I, I, I took the call and he said, don't hang up, don't hang up, don't hang up. Listen, have you ever heard of an infrared heater? I'm like, no, I've never heard of an infrared heater. He said, meet me at breakfast and I'm going to show you how to make three to $5,000 a day. Just have breakfast with me. And so the short version of the story, I went to breakfast on a napkin. He drew out how I could make three to $5,000 a day. And my mind went nuts. Like I expanded inside of my mind in that moment to think, well, if I could do that in one day, what would happen if I put three guys doing it? What happened if I put five guys doing it? What would happen if I put 15 guys doing it? And I see that it has legs and this could possibly work. So... I waited until I got laid off from the railroad, which happens all the time, especially to new conductors and engineers. And I used that opportunity to jump. I went to my father-in-law. I said, Hey, look, this dude, like, I think he's onto something. Um, he, he represents these products and this, is, this was his in, right? Like you're the biggest waste. You're the biggest waste. You're the biggest waste, but wait, I'm the rep for the talent for, for this thing that'll fill your talent and put you in a place of, of prosperity. But he was right. And so I reached out to my father-in-law. I said, Gene, look, um, Bob and I just got done with breakfast. Here's what this looks like. I would really, really like it if we could, um, if you'd invest in me, if you'd take a risk, like I'll make you a 50-50 partner and we'll just go nuts. And so that was somewhere around 2006. And, and by 2010, that company was doing 42 million a year. We had... Um, we had over 120 salespeople coast to coast, three major distributors, one in Canada, one in, in, um, in Iowa, and then one out in Virginia Beach. We, we also had a couple other distributors, some out in Utah. And, and just anyway, we grew a really big business. I learned a lot. I learned how to scale a company from my living room to nearly $50 million a year in sales. But the thing that happened, I could have stayed a conductor not operating inside of my gift, but somebody recognized the gifting in me, called me out on it, and then showed me a path. And I sprinted at that path inside of my gifts, inside of my ability to communicate, inside of my ability to vision and see. Like one of the things that I'm extremely good at inside of a company is looking at where it's broken and looking at how to scale it. Inside of the auto industry, we started this business with a few hundred thousand dollars just 24 months ago, already we like we've done over 10 million dollars in sales. We grew from 20 cars to just under 100 cars. We've acquired a huge piece of property behind us and built out a full retail service center. Like all of these things inside of 24 months because scaling companies, like it's inside of my gifting. Selling products, selling cars, selling you know um, lenders, selling myself to the people around me. Like that's inside of my gifting, inside of the gifting of of communication. It's why a podcast makes sense for me because my ability to communicate, to take a key concept and break it into a tangible story and give you applicable steps to follow so that you can do that same thing yourself, that's inside of my gifting. But what I see so many people do, like this isn't, hey, money moves, I'm going to tell you all about Michael Munsterman. And it's like what I see so many people do is they step into a business for the money. So flashback to like, let's go back to what I, where I started this entire conversation. People chase a dollar. They chase a lifestyle. They chase 
a dream. But what they're not doing, they're not operating inside of the gifts that they've been given or the gifts that they've been conditioned to inside of their life. Like my mother challenged every single thing that I wanted as a child, but it taught me how to communicate and negotiate. She taught, she gave me so much resistance on the littlest things that I, it taught me and sharpened me to, to expect like what she might say next. What are the three variations of this pitch that I'm going to give her? What are the three possible objections that she's going to have? And what am I going to be prepared with to retort, to move beyond her objection and closer to my end goal? And what would happen if I ask for something bigger than what I actually want and the negotiation lands with me right where I want to be? So by the time I'm 18 years old, stepping out into the world out of my mother's house, she had sharpened me to negotiate with some of the best negotiators in the world. And, and the same guy, Bobby, he was sitting across from me one time and he said, he said, you are one of the absolute most brilliant individuals that I've ever met at faking sincerity. And I'll never forget that I was 18 years old and he, and he told me I was one of the best individuals he had ever met at faking sincerity. And I smiled all the way through what I think he intended to be a compliment, but it hurt because that's not, that's not inside of my gifting. My gifting is to genuinely connect to the person across from me to get entrenched in their story and to understand their logic and understand how, what it is that I'm offering them or what it is that I'm presenting to them is truly going to add a markable value to their life but I had to step into my gifts to exercise it and sprint. And so inside of the men and women out there who are chasing money, money will always elude you. The thing is, is that, and this is a, this is a, this is something that I think every single person should recognize and think about whatever you think about and focus on expands in your world. Every single thing that is your unified vision and focus will expand in this world with one exception, money. Because people focus on money and they focus on chasing money, but money's not the win. All money is, is a measurement of the amount of value you add to the world. So whenever you focus on money, you take your focus off of your gifting you take your focus off of giving value to the world. And so your focus on money pulls everything that you need to accomplish away from the gifts that you have. And when you shift your focus away from money and on your gifting and on delivering value to the marketplace, you can move mountains and the money will come. And so I, I laugh when I watch people online chase and pursue money. When I watch people pretend to be influencers and pretend to be things that they're not, pretend to be business coaches, pretend to be real estate experts, pretend to be like marketing gurus. And the fact is like, I get it, fake it till you make it. But if it's not inside of your gifting, you're just faking. And you've got to stand on your talents because your gifts will make room for you. And so I guess the point of everything today is like, I've had a couple conversations where I've been saddened because people are in businesses that are struggling and I sit with them for a brief period and I want to tell them the truth. And the truth is you're not going to be successful in this business because you don't give two craps about the value you're adding to the marketplace. You're not operating inside of your gifts. You stepped into this industry because you wanted to get paid. And so for gurus that are out there flashing their cars and flashing their houses and telling you that they can show you the roadmap, the fact is, is that if you're not gifted in the same gifting wheelhouse as those people, you won't succeed. It's why every piece of content that I'm creating and every single thing that I'm building is to a pinnacle. And the pinnacle isn't to show people how to get rich. The pinnacle for me is to show people how to think and operate inside of their gifts so that they can leverage their gifts from a savvy perspective that lets them scale to the lifestyle that they deserve. And it's so simple. The lifestyle that you deserve is solely reflected by the amount of value you can bring to the world based on your gifts. You can't step out and say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to be rich. If it were that easy, everybody would do it. You're going to have to do some soul searching. We've talked about your why, right? Like you're going to have to get centered inside of your why, wrap your gift around that why, 
and step out to add value first and the money will follow. But I promise you, if you focus on the money, it will elude you forever because you're taking your focus off of the things that will genuinely generate value and bring you wealth. This is the secret sauce. You have to be willing to operate inside of your gifts. You have to be vulnerable to say, hey, I'm not good at that and surround yourself with a team of people who operate inside of their gifts. You know, I was talking the other day about what I look for when I hire employees. And I said, I'm not looking for employees that I have to pull to be successful. I'm looking for employees that pull me. Inside of my organization, I don't even call them employees. They're not, they're, they're, they're team members. They're my peer group. Because inside of their gifting, they excel. They're, they're leaders beyond me inside of the areas that they're the best. And I'm not a video editor. I'm not the guy editing the content. That's not my gifting. I'm not in the background. Like I, I regularly tell Phil that I would make a really great rapper, but he's yet to drop the beat around me and he's not interested in my freestyling. I think that's because the few times I've tried to rap, it's been extremely corny and I definitely make fun of myself. So I don't want to rabbit hole here, but Phil on air right now, like I'm going to tell everybody, don't cut this part because I'm telling you before this is said and done, like I'm going to shoot a rap video, even though it's not my gifting, like I'm going to, we're going to do that thing. <laughs> because I want to have fun. But, but more importantly, if I set out and I'm like, I'm going to get paid, I'm going to be a rapper. Like the thing that I recognize is that I'm not, I'm just not, that's not my gifting. I have absolutely zero rhythm. We're going to totally have to fake it. It's going to take a million takes and Phil might quit, but it's going to be fun for me <laughs> because I'm going to realize a dream. But you, you get what I'm saying? Like, like this is so simple, but it's elusive because you have to be vulnerable enough to look in the mirror and say, I'm weak there. Like, that's not my gift. I don't have the wherewithal to put down the $50,000 necessary to buy that first piece of, of real estate. One, I haven't exercised my, my internal gift enough to deliver enough value to the marketplace that I could save $50,000, let alone have it in the bank to, so that I could capitalize on that real estate gain or that real estate expense. And even though you see these guys with their brilliant lifestyles and everything's awesome, what you didn't see was, like, you didn't see me humble myself $300,000 in debt and go sit across from a man that has spent his entire life building his fortune, begging for him to believe in me so that I could step out and do this thing. But my father-in-law, luckily for me, recognized the same gifts that Bob did. And because my mind was right and I was humble enough to ask, I'm not like, I don't have what you had. I, I told my father-in-law this the day that I presented this to him. I took the same napkin and I went to my father-in-law and I said, look, I can sell anything. I will not have, like, I will not lose your money, but I think we can make a lot of money and I'm willing to split it with you because you have something I don't. Years of experience, tons of operational experience and the money. But I will break my back. I'll work seven days a week. I will not fail you. And he believed me. And so when you're, when you're looking at what's my next step, how am I going to get that money so I can go invest in that real estate? And look, I've been in the real estate industry, so I'm not knocking it. There's a lot of money that can be made. I've got properties that pay me net net 150K a year. Like the way you get that though, is by operating inside of your gifts and building opportunity. You know, I've, so like I'm, I'm running down a lot of different rabbit holes in this one, but I posted something on my Instagram and it, and it was, uh, and I'm just going to plug that real quick. I won't plug it at the end, but it's, um, at MJ Munsterman, or you can find me by search Michael Munsterman, but I put this picture and it's, it's of this house and it says a million dollars in debt with, um, $10,000 in the bank. And the next to it is $500,000 in the bank, zero debt. And then on the, on the house with the million dollars in debt, there's a Rolex and there's a a Lambo or some kind of ridiculous car out front. And it amazes me the conversation and argument arguing that's happening inside of this post on which who's who's who would you rather be? And so to me, like it's simple. The guy on the right has this op amazing opportunity because he's got 500 K in the bank and his house is paid for. He was savvy in his operating. And so when that opportunity presents itself for him to be able to leverage that income, like my father-in-law, when he saw that talent in me and, and agreed with my decision that, Hey, yeah, this is good. We, we can make a little bit of money doing this. He was prepared. 
And that taught me a crazy valuable lesson about operating in your gifts so you can be prepared when something's outside of your gifting, but partnering with people who have the appropriate gifting that, that you don't. And as an employer, as a team builder, or as a manager, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, a entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. You have to recognize what your gifts are so you can scale and leverage those gifts for the masses, not to the masses. I'm going to say that one more time. Like you have to operate inside of your gifts for the masses, not to the masses. In other words, you're genuinely heart of hearts, not faking sincerity, but going to the marketplace from a place of sincere, like you have to be sincere in your heart. Because if you're faking sincerity and you're going to the masses for the money, the money will elude you. I'm not going to beat this up anymore. I think you get where I'm going with this. At the end of the day, guys, like my heart is to add value to the marketplace. And by my value that I'm bringing to the marketplace is hopefully to get you to rethink the way that your mind's been programmed to think about wealth and money and to strategically put you in a, in a point where I aim you at your gifts, pull the slingshot back and let you go. So keep listening here on Money Moves. Make your own money moves. I'm Michael Munsterman. Hit me up on social media. Check out all the different, we're everywhere. Um, the podcast is live on nearly everything. I think by the end of next week, we will even be on iHeartRadio. So if, uh, if, if you love this, please like it, share it, do the thing. Um, comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. If, even if you disagree, like I, I heard this really great thing last week. It's, it's like, um, it's like, uh, uh, Marilyn Manson, I think is the one that said it. He said something like, uh, you measure your success on how many people love you and how many people hate you. Like the fact is you're making an impact and people are hearing your message and that's where you measure your impact. I really think that this is a message that's going to resonate with you. If you'll take the time to rethink about it and look at your own life and evaluate just very black and white. What are my gifts? Where is my passion? Where can I get up and go and execute every single day and it not feel like work, but it feel like fun. And then inside of those gifts, how do I add value to the, to the world? And maybe you just start with how do I add value to one person's life? Because if you can add value, that means you're fixing or solving a problem. And the marketplace will pay you for that. Savvy? Sun up to the sun down. Map it out, now run it down. Mayweather, I never lose. I be making these hundreds move.